Mitch McConnell deepens GOP civil war by warning he could oppose Trump-backed candidates such as daughter-in-law Laura and Marjorie Taylor Greene in favor of electable Republicans. Quick thought on Mitch. It seems like there's been some contradiction in terms of how he approached impeachment. He's been on record saying some things about how he didn't feel that Trump was impeachable, but then at the same time, his rhetoric seemed to be that of you know, trying to play both sides of it, saying things about Trump, but then at the same time, he votes not to convict. Interesting. So he's out there talking a big game, but not really delivering much, I guess, depending on what side of the aisle you're on. Let's read a little bit about this, and then I have an interesting poll that I want to show you, something that perhaps you're privy to if you're somebody in the center or more on the left. Perhaps you're not familiar with this information. So Mitch talking that smack. Mitch, the Senate minority leader, voted Saturday to acquit Trump. He later accused the president of a disgraceful dereliction of duty. As I said, McConnell managed to anger both supporters and critics of Trump. There you go. That's the only thing with the partisanship, the way we have it. And you out there watching this get that. That the way things are so charged right now, if you try to play both sides of the fence, they're both going to want you dead. <laughs> it's the nature we live in right now. On Sunday, McConnell said he was focused now on the 2022 races. He said he'd only back electable candidates, regardless of Trump's direction. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. That's that's not bad. Electable candidates is good for them. You don't want to back somebody who's a loser, right? McConnell did not mention names, but he has been troubled by Taylor Greene. On Sunday, a column in the Lexington Herald Leader excoriated McConnell. And this is exactly what I was saying right here. They're so much more eloquent. His tightrope walk between defending and demonizing the former president impressed few. That's what I was getting at. His hometown newspaper, the Lexington Herald Leader, accused him on Sunday of having contorted himself into a strange pretzel-shaped politician hated by everyone. I don't know that he wasn't hated by everyone prior to this, but now more so. Turtle man, Mr. McConnell of a murder. There's Donnie, man. He needs to get his butt in a gym somewhere. Because at this rate, he isn't going to make it to 2024. He might last to 2022 to have some impact there, but man... It's getting a little sloppy. Melania's fly, though. He needs to start going jogging with her, doing whatever workout plan that she's got going on. McConnell says, My goal is, in every way possible, to have nominees representing the Republican Party who can win in November, he said. Some of them may be people the former president likes. Some of them may not be. The only thing I care about is electability. Hmm. So, are you saying that... The title was trying to mislead me about some kind of civil war within the GOP when all Moscow Mitch cares about is getting people elected. What? The title was misleading a little bit? McConnell did not mention any names. Hmm. He wants to find candidates that can actually win. Hmm. Amazing, right? So, oh, civil war! Other candidates likely to be backed by Trump, such as his daughter-in-law, Lara, Hey, Laura or Lara, expected to make a run for Senate in 2022, could not count on McConnell's support, he said. I'm not predicting the president would support people who couldn't win, McConnell said, but I do think electability, not who supports who, is the critical point. McConnell declined to say whether he would support the former president if he seeks re-election in four years' time. I'm focused on 2022, he said. Shelley Moore Capito, a Republican senator for West Virginia, admitted that the party was at a crucial juncture with deep division between loyal Trumpites and those committed, like her, to McConnell. Somebody better get Trump on the phone. I think we got another one that needs to be primaried. Capito is going to be Caputo. <laughs> Trying to get Joe Manchin out of there, too, as I said before, West Virginia. Deep red. How does Joe Manchin survive? I don't, I don't know how they can't find somebody in West Virginia to get him out of a state that red. I don't know what happens to the party as a whole in terms of folks deeply committed to President Trump, she told the site, but I hope they stick with us. 
Let me show you that poll real quick, and I think you know where this is going. Well, let me read this real quick. Andy Biggs, a representative for Arizona and head of the new arch conservative House Freedom Caucus, said many people in his party were upset at McConnell. A lot of people are frustrated with his comments, and I'm not going to sugarcoat it, he said, adding that Trump's influence remained. The fact that he is no longer in the White House does not mean he is not leader of the movement he started four or five years ago, and... The swamp comes in many forms. The swamp can be full of Republicans, Independents, and Democrats. It just doesn't pertain to Democrats. It's establishment, old guard, versus the new guard. Trumpites, Trumpsters, MAGA folk, nationalist, populist, whatever you want to call them. Whatever label you want to put them under in terms of folks on the right. On the left, they have their own. Communists, socialists, social democrats, progressives. They all have their labels as well. And as I know, I'm not telling you anything you don't know. It's old guard versus new guard. As I said, young people coming up with new ideas, country evolving, people's ideologies evolve with that. The old guard trying to maintain their power. McConnell, Pelosi, Schumer, all of those individuals are the same to me. You can probably name 10 others, 20, 30 others on each side. They're all the same to me. They all swim in the same stanky swamp. <laughs> all right, let's take a look at this poll real quick. McConnell thinks he's live, huh? McConnell thinks he's got it going on. Capito? Caputo thinks she's got it going on? Hmm, let's see here. February 5th. This is from the Political Insider. I don't know if they have any particular side that they run with, any particular favored, whether they be left or right. Poll. 64% of Republican voters would join Trump if he started a new party. This is from Rusty Weiss. Unfortunately, not Barry Weiss. Hi, Barry. If you're watching, what's up, bro? In a blow to the GOP establishment, a new Hill Harris X poll shows an overwhelming percentage of Republican voters would join a new political party established by former President Donald Trump. A survey asked how likely voters would be to join Trump-led party. 64% of Republican voters said they would be likely to cross over, with half of those saying they would be very likely to join. The survey also found that a surprising chunk of independent voters, 28%, and Democrats, 15%, said they would sign up for a third party formed by Trump. Interesting. I saw something else where it seemed like they were saying that that number was lower, only about 30% would join a third party, but it was kind of confusing the way the data was put out there. So we'll stick with this one for now. February 5th, we'll see what happens as time goes forward and we get further and further away from what happened at the Capitol. Dritin Nesho, CEO and chief pollster at Harris X, notes the latest poll shows Trump remains a political force to be reckoned with. How much sway does he have? If Trump were to split from the GOP and create his own party, polling suggests he might well create the second largest political party in the country, knocking the GOP down to third place. Nesho added, 92% of Trump voters want him to be the 2024 nominee. Don't believe corporate media myths about some massive GOP split. The voters unite behind an America First Workers Party. There you go. Maybe that's the name right there. Is there a party already called that? I don't know. But if that's the party name, Patriot Party was talked about, Nationalist Populist Party, another possible name. And that's what I'm talking about. Mitch thinks he's live. He thinks he has the clout and the juice. He has some, no doubt. He's still in office. Survived his race in 2020 against a Democrat. I wonder if Trump looks to put somebody in place to primary him leading up to the 2024 election. It'd be interesting. Let's read a little bit more from the first article here. McConnell and Biggs could find themselves representing different opposing ends of the Republican Party line in 2022. McConnell has shown his support for figures like embattled Representative Liz Cheney, who voted to impeach Trump on January 13, and has been singled out by Trump supporting Republicans ever since. She is up for re-election in 2022, and it is already clear that she is going to face a strong challenge. One of Trump's staunchest supporters, Florida Representative Matt Gates, even went to Wyoming last month to campaign against her. Ooh, Florida, going up into Wyoming. The future of the party will be determined in places like Wyoming in 2022, McConnell said. He spoke on the day Kentucky's influential newspaper excoriated him in a column. And 
this is what my take would be on that. You saw the poll, 64% of Republicans saying likely, 50% saying very likely. The question would be, and I posed this in a previous video when I was talking about the possible formation of a Patriot Party or some kind of third party is, what about the 36% come 2022 or 24? We know partisanship and tribalism is what it is. So let's say those 64% of people did decide to go with Trump or a Trump-backed candidate in 2022. Are those other people going to stay at home? Are they going to flip to Democrat? Are they going to come out and support the Trump-backed candidate? That's the question that I'm thinking about is how many people would be, let's say, never Trumpers, rhinos they call them, neocons. How many of those individuals would have such a hatred of Trump that they would just stay home and let the Democrats win? It's partisanship, as I said, tribalism, and it works the same way with Democrats. There were people that were mad about how Bernie was treated. People that maybe were mad about how Klobuchar or Warren or Tulsi were treated during the Democratic presidential primary. How many of them stayed at home? Oh, uh, they, they screwed Bernie over. Uh, I'm going to show them. There was data that showed that a lot of people flipped from Obama to Trump in, in 2016. But what were those numbers like in 2020? How many Bernie supporters actually jumped ship? I would guess, and I haven't seen the numbers on that, so you can let me know about this, but I would guess that a lot of those individuals stayed within the Democratic Party. So that's really the question, is whether or not it's some kind of third party, or whether Trump looks to work to, say, reform the GOP. And I think reformation needs to come in the name of a brand and image change, and a name change as well. Rebrand the thing. And they always talk about Democrats saying anything associated with slavery should be done away with. So the joke is, okay, well, then you need to change the name of your whole party. Well, perhaps that's a situation here where once he gains enough influence and has enough individuals in place that they rebrand the GOP, starting with a name change. To me, that would signify a new day. It may not necessarily be the ultimate place you want to get to, but things are always evolving. So that's just how I see it. I see it far easier to work within the framework of the GOP, kind of hollow it out, actually drain it, and then move on to rebranding rather than trying to come up with some third party. Let me know what you think about that. Do you think it's third party all the way or do you think you work within the existing GOP framework? Same with the progressives. That's what they're trying to do on the left, the far left, I should say, that rather than going off and forming their own thing, standing behind a third party, call it third party, there's so many parties out there, but rather than trying to put up their own candidate, rather than trying to encourage Bernie to run, which we all know he's nothing but a Democratic stooge <laughs> who bent over for money, but rather than trying to coalesce behind a strong candidate and get that individual to split off of the Democratic Party, they're working from within, trying to make change from within. So I think that's the best strategy. I think they're correct when it comes to that. They're taking the best course of action. A couple comments real quick and then we'll wrap it up. Laughing out loud. Bye-bye, Mitch. I guess this is why the forefathers didn't want a proper democracy. The stupid people vote for stupid people. Mitch dodging the deadly bite from the MAGA zombies. Psst, Mitch, you got to pretend to be one of them to survive. You know, Walking Dead, you got to rub some of that blood on you, put a little bit of skin on you if you've seen the show. According to the Republican Party, <laughs> got you, baby. United Kingdom, you came clutch with that one. And Trump's defense team. There is no guilt or no crime committed here, LOL. Hmm, interesting. Sounds like our friend watches CNN and MSNBC. Like I always said to individuals who are on the left, if you've got video of the dude saying, go storm the Capitol and do what they did, I'll be with you and I'll burn him as well. Have a great president today. Celebrate all the great presidents and even the ones that were turds in the greatest country there is. Take care, everybody. Hopefully you're all doing well. And I hope a lot of you are getting the day off today. Go outside and exercise. Be active. <laughs> Take care, everyone.